Uh, we covered um, the, the Steubenville uh, case uh, to the extent that uh, local anonymous and um, uh, different anonymous groups within anonymous essentially um, really brought this case to national attention. And uh, many claim uh, that uh, without their work, uh, there would have been no court case, uh, frankly. And, uh, but what has really been shocking, I think, about this case beyond the, the crime of rape that was committed was what it has shown about the way our society, and I guess maybe there shouldn't be surprise, but on some level it is just sort of just shocking. The, the perception that people have of rape in this country and the way that our mainstream media looks at this stuff is just, I mean, it's stunning. Um, so you have this case of rape in Steubenville where a 16-year-old a uh, girl, woman, uh, was basically used like a, I mean, it's like a, like a rag doll. She was drunk, semi-conscious, unconscious, um, and um, raped by these uh, members of, I guess, of the local football team. And this is, a, this is a town that has a history of cover-ups to protect members of the football team. Yeah, we spoke, I think, um, with, uh, with a reporter uh, some time back, I can't remember who it was, who told us that there was a lot of stuff going on in Steubenville that was just a, sort of uh, a mess. And the, this, uh, this case, of course, uh, garnered a lot of national attention because a lot of video came out of the reaction of other uh, football players. Uh, and we spoke with... Uh, Kristen Gwynn of Alternate. Right. And of other players and their complete disregard for really the hum humanity of this victim. And so the, the case got a lot of coverage. The verdict got a lot of coverage, uh, I guess, over the weekend. And what was stunning was after uh, the 17-year-old Trent Mays and 16-year-old Malik Richmond were sentenced by the judge. They were found guilty of uh, raping uh, this 16-year-old girl while she was unconscious. Uh, I guess Richmond will be in a uh, juvenile facility until the age of 21. Mays could be incarcerated at least until age 24. Listen, just to set this up, I mean, uh, CNN did a live report from outside the thing, and at first it was uh, Candy Crowley was anchoring it. She threw to a reporter uh, whose last name I think was uh, Harlow, and the tone, I mean, there was nothing in specific that she said, but the tone of Harlow's reporting was so sympathetic to the rapist that in its totality it was very, very strange. And so Candy Crowley comes back. Actually, and she, she did sympathize with Harlow herself. She said something. She said, uh, incredibly difficult to watch. Well, these yes, two incredibly young men. difficult to watch yeah. these two young men. I mean, and who had such promising futures, star football players, very good students, literally watched as they uh, believed their life fell apart. I mean, you can sort of describe the drama of this on some level. Of course, that's what the media likes to do. But it's done from a very, from a, at least somewhat sympathetic perspective, but it really comes into relief when Candy Crowley sets up an interview with another guest right after this. Here is that audio. Candy. Uh, Poppy Harlow in Subinville, Ohio for us. Uh, I want to bring in Paul Callen, Callen, our CNN legal contributor. You know, Paul, uh, a 16 year old now just sobbing in court. Uh, regardless of what big football players they are, they still sound like 16-year-olds. Uh, the other one, 17, a 16-year-old victim. The, the thing is, when you listen to it and you realize that they could stay until they're 21, they are going to get credit for time served. What's the lasting effect, though, on two young men being found guilty in juvenile court of rape, essentially? Now, now let's break this down here for a minute, okay? The first off, these 16 year olds, yeah, they're big football players, but they're just kids. First of all, I want to know the last time in the history of ever that CNN has reported on the conviction 
of a 16 and 17 year old African American man um, who have committed a violent crime with such sympathy. I mean, we had Ken Burns on this program talking about the Central Park Five. And these guys were almost lynched. These guys who were younger, who were completely innocent. But yet, because they were such, they were star football players. Because, I, I mean, I don't even understand the, the, what's going through Candy Crowley's head now. Yes, okay, they broke down. They committed rape. A brutal, I mean, an inexplicably brutal rape of this unconscious woman. Um, I suppose you can say that you could you can express some measure of you know humanity dictates uh, some expression of of some measure of 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 sympathy I guess, but where is the wh how is that the first question? Now that we know with uh, you know we have a legal conviction, this sixteen year old woman, what is going to happen to her life? Having uh, been the victim of such a heinous crime, having it uh, so uh, widely known, her name will undoubtedly come out. This is not going to go away. And then to say rape, essentially? What does that mean? No, they were convicted of rape. Not essentially, not technically, not mostly. No, rape. I mean, I don't understand what, uh, you know, I, it's just inexplicable. I mean, where's the producer saying, hey, Candy, you may want to back off the sympathy for these rapists. You know, I mean, if you want to talk about some broader cultural influences uh, that explica explicate this situation, they obviously don't relieve these people of any guilt, but, but, it, but, but, to just talk about, like, boy, these, these kids' lives are, really, this is going to be tough for them to rebound from this rape conviction. The idea that somehow, you know, these kids had no agency because they were drunk or whatnot, it's just stunning. And this is, I think, just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what you see in terms of the reaction uh, to this case in many quarters. But one can almost, well, well let me put it this way. It's not hard to see or to understand why you have people who are like blaming the victim, blaming everything but the perpetrators of this crime when you have the national media, perhaps the most extensive coverage in the national media of this case would probably be on CNN, describing the plight of these poor convicted rapists. It's just stunning. Okay. Ah, it's it stunning. Even, no, it wasn't even that, you know, it wasn't even victim blaming. It was literally victim excluding. I mean, that was the other just astonishing thing. You could listen to this whole clip, and we did when we were preparing this morning. I don't think the victim was even indirectly mentioned once for at least several minutes. No. And I mean that very literally. No. Like, it, ju it just wasn't even a factor. No. And the guy Candy Crowley invited on goes on to talk about how, man, this they're going to be labeled as sex offenders for the rest of their lives. How this will haunt those two poor boys. Like It's like a randomly assigned thing. It's like, yes, yes. when you commit a sex crime and you are convicted of it, you are assigned right. a sex offender status because you have committed a sex crime. It's, it's not this bizarre, arbitrary fate that was assigned to no, these kids. It's stunning. It's it's really stunning. I I don't know where this where this comes from. I mean, I don't understand how Candy Crowley can because she's obviously not working on a script, right? I mean, this is just sort of like the perspective and I, you know, I understand the compulsion to build the drama here and to maintain the human the humanity on some level of these criminals. Uh I mean, but this is just crossing a line and really stripping the victim of her humanity. It's just, I, I, it's, I just find it bizarre.